Hey dorks, just a quick message reminding you to head over to twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast and give us a follow. We live stream when we record our new podcast episodes, and we're live streaming video game sessions on Saturday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. We're playing super rad stuff like Among Us, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, Jackbox Games, and Tabletop Simulator. Come hang out and play along with us. That's twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast, everyone. My name is Doug. And my name is Justin. And we have a very special guest tonight. Justin, would you yes. like to introduce our very wonderful and mustachioed guest? Oh, I'm going to introduce the shit out of this mustachioed guest as he prunes himself. Preens? Prunes. Preens. As he grooms himself. Please welcome from episode six. Six? Is this six? Yes. Six. Mm -hmm. Episode six of the Quarantine Files. Seth. <laughs> Gerspach! Uh, thank you. Oh, my God. I've always just wanted kids to cheer for me. It's just all I've ever wanted. Right? Uh, thank you for having me, guys. <laughs> We're not gonna, I oh, promise no. we won't get to Morning Madhouse. I just needed to get that out of the way. <laughs> amazing. Uh, may I please just again comment? You have an amazing mustache. And I, got, I, think, I think committing to a mustache... It's it's a tr it's 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 probably one of the bravest things you can do in our lifetime, is commit to that. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, we're going on what? I mean, Justin, you were there in the origin of it because it was back when we were doing season one of Chicago HR. That's yeah. where this came about, and I was like, I think I really like this. Give me the authority that I I never had. <laughs> And well, still I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> I just got an alert on my phone that said, hey, remember what you were doing three years ago today? And so I think it was about three, three and a half years ago that we were doing season one. Holy crap. Yeah, that is wild. Right. Oh, man. I have. Uh, I, I thought that I would be on like, you know, the television by now. And uh, <laughs> I'm just stuck with you fuckers. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Welcome Great. back to our den of evil. Because uh, 80 episodes, exactly 80 episodes ago, uh, you first premiered on the podcast, and now you're back. So we are so happy to have you back. I am genuinely honored. Uh, it's very exciting to be back. Um, like, I had a blast last time. I mean, we covered fucking everything, and I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know how we got where we were, but that's where we got, and I loved it. Yeah, and honestly, that's I'm what this honored. show's all about. We go down tangents and paths, and we see where they lead us. And they were—they were—it was a wild one with you, and it was great. We found all the mind gaps. Mm-hmm. Yes, oh. sir. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The namesake. Mm. Mm. Scooping what you're pooping here. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of scoop and poop, a couple of housekeeping uh, stuff, real quick. Uh, first of all, don't forget to check us out on Spotify while you can. Foreshadowing for a topic. Uh, we are on there, so be sure to check us out. Also, uh, come join our Discord server. Uh, we have a link to it in our chat. It's also linked on our Twitch uh, down below. Just click on the banner. And if you're listening, uh, just come check out our profile on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. Join our community. Uh, we've got lots of fans that are hanging out there. We, we communicate on a regular basis. We set up video game nights and all sorts of stuff. We have got cool memes. We talk about all sorts, all sorts of cool stuff. So you can check out clips from the show and really be a part of our community. We'd love to have you. So come, come join that on our Discord. Also, don't forget to follow at MGP Throwdowns for deeper dives into our throwdowns. Wolf's Lore, one of the fans of the show, runs that account, does deeper dives into our throwdowns. He goes back to our origins and kind of revisits them and tries to point out if we're flawed or if we're right. So be sure to check that out as well. And uh, also, um, you know, don't forget, we also have a video game stream every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, it's our Mind Gap video game uh, stream at my, uh, twitch.tv slash Mind Gap podcast. Last weekend, last Saturday, we played a game called Project Winter, 
which was phenomenal. If you all are familiar with the game Among Us, which is blowing up right now like wildfire, this is a little more complicated version of that where you and some fellow survivors are stuck in the frozen wilderness and your objective is to fix different things to call in a rescue helicopter, but two people in your party are traitors and they are going to attempt to sabotage what you do. So what's crazy about it is you could die to the elements, you could die to wild animals, or the traders can straight up murder you or trick you, or it gets pretty insane. We had a really good time. Uh, Noah, one of our uh, one of the fans, did a fantastic job of screwing us over a couple of times, sowing discontent. Uh, Jared got eaten by wolves. I mean, really, it was it was a true it was a true mind gap podcast uh, stream. You could want really. Yeah, it was really really fun. So if you want to check out that, uh, that's you know on our video on demand on our Twitch channel. Also, a couple of clips from that are pretty cool too. And this Saturday, this Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, do you know what do you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna happen. We're gonna head back into the dungeon with Dungeons and Dragons: The Fantasy Board Game, starring Justin as Miley. The wizard, we've got Eric as Josen, the cleric. We've got Sam as Regdar, the warrior. And we've got little, little mini Jared as Linda, the halfling rogue. We're going back in. We're going to finish up on Adventure 5 of Dungeons & Dragons, the fantasy board game. So don't miss out. Be there 8 p.m. Central Time at twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. I'm excited. Are you excited, this Justin? All a live read. Uh, I have never seen someone like hit puberty before my eyes. <laughs> that was amazing. What do you mean? <laughs> oh my Wait, God. Both balls dropped. D and D often. Am I interrupting uh, more information because I play D and D on the weekly? Oh, really? Really? Uh -huh. Really, my friend. Okay, well, okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, <laughs> let me clarify. This is what I like to refer to as D and D light. Yes, um, this is it's remedial D and D. It's mm -hmm. it's very much it's it's a board game from I think the eighties or early nineties. It very much streamlines and simplifies everything. Uh, it's very it's it's very simple in that regard. And I thought it would be a really cool opportunity to get folks like Justin and some other people sort of introduced to this by playing this game. It's it's something I play on Tabletop Simulator, so it's really fun and, and simple. But you you play Dungeons and Dragons? You a fan? You fan? I I'm I'm fan. Uh I'm a fresh fan though. Same. I mean, I've always yeah, been a fan, but like we just uh some of my friends from my hometown in like upstate New York, uh we with quarantine we were like, well, we should finally play because we've talked about playing D&D for age i feel like that's kind of the trend is like we should play dnd it's like yeah no one wants to set that shit up no one wants to actually <laughs> learn it unless you already have an expert mm -mm, it's not happening right. uh so we finally <laughs> conned one of our friends into being the dm and forced him to learn it so he could teach us and uh, nice uh, it's been a blast i um i'm most recently uh, a were rat which is really fun you're a were rat you got you got bit by the were rat in uh, very intentionally. I ah. like their community and just kind of how they treat each other. Like, I want to be part of these people or whatever you want to call them. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and we had to kill them all, which uh, that was, you know, sad about, but, you know. That's amazing. That's so cool. Them. Yeah, I, um, I've um i played uh, with with a group uh, from, from work for a while, and then I, I just, I got bit by the D&D &D bug, and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to DM, so... I reached out Ooh. to my brother and he got some friends and so I started DMing a campaign for them and it's been a goddamn blast. It's been so much fun and uh, it's intense, but at the same time, I'm just like, let's see where this goes, man. Let's see what happens. And it's been so much mm -hmm. fun. So there's never been a better time to do this. Because, actually, the pandemic makes it easier because mm -hmm. you've got things like Roll20, you've got things like Tabletop Simulator, you've got all mm -hmm. these things at your fingertips to connect digitally with people using things like D&D Beyond or whatever. It makes it so easy. So if anyone is interested, uh, I, I can't encourage it enough. Like, don't be don't be afraid. Like, it's totally cool. We're doing a couple of one shots with our Mind Gap community. Uh, one of our, our folks, uh, Noah, he's doing a Call of Cthulhu one shot with us oh, and fuck. which is That's gonna be really wild we're gonna be doing that this friday which i'm super excited about 
be really that cool. That actually piques my that. interest. Okay, so you're okay. That's good. My goal for 2021 is to get Justin into some sort of D and D one shot. I want to just sort of dip mm. his toes into it, and uh, we're trying to get the field for what feel for what he likes. Our our buddy Slotty said uh, he found a, a campaign called Shitbird Shit Fight, uh, where it's basically. <laughs> This bird finds a treasure hoard and puts on this bandana of intelligence, which allows him to speak, and he starts wielding weapons, and uh, it's it's an adventure. So uh, it's called Shit Bird Shit Fight. So. <laughs> uh, that sounds uh, honestly wonderful. I grew up with birds, and they're terrifying creatures. So I would not what's what's the most terrifying thing about well i mean they're basically dinosaurs right you know yeah uh well they're malicious they're they are they are evil beings that are at least the ones that we had my mom was a super empathetic very sweet woman uh would take people's unwanted shit i.e their unwanted birds and we had all these fucking emotionally flawed birds and they would attack me and assault me and it was terrible like genuinely i couldn't be out uh in the living room while the bird was out of its cage uh because it would uh bite me and attack me and i can't fight back i will i will crush it immediately so i just have to sit there crying i uh, feel like we talked about this the last time you were on i feel like this seems very familiar to me yeah. have you talked about how much you hate birds yeah oh it's it's weird that it's brought up twice now, but I think about it often where I'm like, fuck that bird, man. Fuck that. I just like that you refer to them as emotionally flawed birds. <laughs> they needed counseling. That was the big thing. They need counseling. They could have been fine, fine birds. Uh, oh. so anyway, yeah, that sounds like a good D&D. Yeah, well... It'll be great. So I'm I'm so glad, you know, uh, and, and, and you know maybe it's a situation where in the future we could uh, do a one shot with you too. We'd love to have you. That'd be great. Me? Yes. Oh, yeah, you, you, Seth. I'm not you. used to being invited to things. Yes, well, that would be wonderful. All right, cool. Then you're uninvited. I feel like a lot better and I feel like I know where my place is now. <laughs> in all seriousness, <laughs> I like that. I would love to uh do any sort of D&D with you. I think you'd be an absolute blast. So, for sure. I, absolutely sign me up <laughs> also one of the the main reasons we're having you back is because you're part of the newest episode coming out this friday for the quarantine files mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. tell us what was it like filming your episode yeah what 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 really what was justin like was he a good uh, director was was he yeah. uh you know <laughs> more yeah. Uh, actually, Justin, uh, great. To, I, him and Drew, both Drew in particular. I'd never worked with Drew. What a fucking delight. Also, this. <laughs> what a I fucking mean, asshole. He's <laughs> an absolute delight. Uh, no, it was super fun. I think the hardest part was uh, I have never had to act for a computer before, and I did not know where to put my eyes often. I was like, what, I, what do I look? I had this problem. I remember in like college with presenting, like they were recording. And I was like, do I look right at the camera? And then I'd peer at the teacher and then I'd look at the camera. And I would say that was absolutely my biggest hurdle. I was like, which part do I look at right now? But it was super fun. Uh, yeah, especially just like to have the opportunity to be like creative over quarantine because I have been wildly abstinent. So it was like, it was a blast. We, uh, you, you were definitely because Adam and I have both worked with you before on Chicago HR, and Drew has only heard me just gush over you and be like, "We need to fucking put this guy in something." And so, uh, it was, yeah, it was. It, there's when you're working with Seth, you'll see there was a couple times where we went, "All right, just kind of go about, like, do this action, and just kind of see where it takes you." And so. Some of the episode definitely has some of Seth's. You'll get to see what a brilliant comedian he is um, uh, in, in just kind of when you give him the the freedom to just fucking go for it. <laughs> well, I got to say, um, like today when I was posting on Twitter to like, you know, hey, don't you know, come check out the recording tonight. Uh, I was trying to see if I could find you on Twitter and I, I searched and there was the post from 80 episodes ago. And below that, there was someone who else that tagged you and it was just a gif 
of, I had to be from Chicago HR where you were dancing in front of a microwave and you were really shaking oh. your hips. And I was like, look at that physicality. I was oh. like, this guy, <laughs> this guy knows what he's doing. He's he just, commits. he was like really just facing, all you could see was his back. And he's just like really d dipping and bobbing and weaving with his hips. And he's just like, I'm microwaving something. And it was, it was glorious. It was beautiful. I, uh, I take a lot of my acting inspiration from Shakira. Uh, nice. Strictly from Shakira, uh, which is why I always have just a little bit of a Spanish accent uh, whenever I'm in anything. It's just like, oh. I was going to ask wanna... about that because I thought that was weird, but it works. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, I i hope that you will not mm. notice it past my um you know when i'm i'm shaking my hips and my uh breasts that are small and humble so you don't confuse them with mountains right yes a, these are uh, facts <laughs> these are facts uh, these are your, facts. your episode deals with um uh it's so each each one of these has been more of uh focused in different genres of films like we've had the musical episode silent film uh the documentary seth's is the um high or the the hacker episode a uh one that we thought would be very fun to put you in you are you revealed to us when we gave you the script that you actually in real life are terrible with technology <laughs> uh i didn't intentionally reveal that but you found out by, uh... <laughs> <laughs> my efforts to get onto a video call successfully with you, uh, which failed numerous times. So, uh, which is something I should really have figured out by now since I, just, I work on a computer. So I have no excuse for my actions. None. I should learn. Is that, is that uh, your, your kind of disdain or fear of technology? Is that why you ditched all social media? Uh, the, the, inability to function well is more comes from a place of uh apathy i would say toward it i'm like eh, it's a machine <laughs> what's uh, doing for me yeah it's a, uh, i don't owe it anything uh the social media was just i i wanted better habits and i was like all right the, the real reason is my hands were getting ouchy because i got a big ass phone i was like i'm on here too often i have <laughs> physical pain and i need to rethink <laughs> what i'm doing with my time even video games feel more productive so i opted for that approach what kind of video games are you playing right now i am working through the resident evil 3 remake nice which is good not as good as the resident evil 2 remake i uh big like resident evil was my shit growing up i loved uh, i think i was a bit of a Stockholm Syndrome uh, situation with horror where I was like, I like having these nightmares. Those are fun. <laughs> this makes me feel alive. Yeah. I like How can I fuel all this? Sweaty. Yeah. yeah. Um, but man, I played uh, Sekiro uh, over the spring, which phenomenal. Can't beat it. I'm not that good. <laughs> um, all of the Soulsborne games, man, um, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I love this trend of video game remakes. I'm not a huge fan of it with movies, but video game remakes. I've tried going back to some of my classic video games that I played as like a kid, um, even the older Final Fantasies, and I'm like, I can't get through this. This is clunky as fuck. A remake, though, it lets me relive it and actually enjoy it. I love it. I'm all, all about right. it. All which, about which, it. Game, which of the Final Fantasies have stood the test of time? Like, you could go back to and play them, like, right now, and they're still good, even in the current state. Ten, for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, I want to say nine. I tried to do nine, and the only reason that I didn't continue was because I, uh, in this uh, test to my technology skill set, I clicked something, which made it go in fast forward on my screen. <laughs> I got very confused. And so I just put it away. <laughs> I closed like, it and I slid it I, into my desk. I broke my switch in half to close it. And I was like, I think it's I'm possessed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I say, yeah, 10 is great though. They did, uh, they updated it for PlayStation 4. Like they mm -hmm. did the, remastered version yeah i love that um, did you play any like before like on the super nintendo or anything like that no seven seven onward is where gotcha. i gotcha i never did any of the the earlier i do really want to um i won't uh 
that's about it. I would say one of the ones that still to this day holds up, and I've only played a handful of them. I've played the first one. Uh, I played the second one in America and the third one because they're all labeled differently depending on Japan or whatever. Final Fantasy three, which is technically I think six uh, in Japan, uh, one of the best hands down games. It, it's so phenomenal. It's great. It's got great sixteen bit graphics. It's got a great oh. soundtrack, and uh, they have just a. It's one of the few games that has so many characters that are playable, and you love every one of them. They're phenomenal. It's got Kafka as the villain, and it's excellent. Like to this day, holds up. It's I I played that one all the way through, and then after that, I kind of lost interest. But I remember watching my brother play Final Fantasy VII. I may as well have played that one. I mean, hell, I and when my brother wasn't around, he's like, if you want, go ahead and breed the chocobos so I can win the chocobo race. I helped level up his characters for him. So like. I, I was a part of that game. But after that, I just lost interest in, you know, whatever. I, I couldn't keep up with it. But we have someone in the chat that says, what are your feelings about Waka? Oh, uh, Waka. I actually really liked Waka. Yeah, him and Lulu. He was, Waka was like, I feel like he was Joey from Friends, essentially. <laughs> just kind of an idiot. And Lulu was very, you know, like dark. And I thought they were a very sweet couple. That's what I think. Nice. Do you think it's realistic that he pulled Lulu despite being casually racist? What? Racist. Now I was born in a very small town, so I wasn't picking up on a lot of that type of stuff initially. So, um, I don't recall. Wait, is it, is it like Kimari? Okay, listen. I don't. I'm gonna be. He says every time he talks about the all bed. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, he's full racist. Actually, that's not very accurate. <laughs> uh, who is that? And why do they have to ruin my childhood? Right now? <laughs> it's slotty. Um, and I, and slotty. Justin, Justin, I want you to know I'm just as lost as you are. By us, I have no idea who Waka is. I have no idea who Lulu is. I have no idea what they're talking about. But. Yep. That's great. Is this from, what is this, t 9 or 10? 10. This cool. Is 10. Good to know. All right. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> I'm looking at Justin. Uh, I'm like, hey, man, I'm right there with you. I don't know this I'm one like, either. I, I liked uh, Final Fantasy 3.14159. That, uh, that was my shit. Yeah? Mm. Final yeah. Fantasy Pi? Yep. Mm. I mean, again, depending on what country you're in, but in here it was, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. So, um... I had something very interesting happen to me over the last two days, and I want to I want to take a moment to share my story with you guys. I feel like this is a safe space. I need to queue up my soundboard. So, <laughs> so uh, yesterday I had a parent teacher conference uh, with my daughter's teacher, and uh, it was over Zoom because you know that's how we do it. So, uh, my wife came up to my office, and she brought the dog with her because our dog's eight months old, and she will fucking just get into shit. She does it anyway. She keeps stealing my daughter's toys out of the living room. And, like, you know she's got something she shouldn't because she comes in with her tail just furiously wagging, like, ha-ha, I did it! Like, she's just pulled off the Ocean's Eleven heist, you know? And I'm like, God damn it! so, like, we have to bring her up. So this is we're in my office right now. It's relatively small, so it's my wife, me, and my dog. And I'm like, this should be really quick, no big deal. And so we're listening, you know, my my uh you know the teacher's great telling us hey here's the things that you know your daughter's working on yada 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 jill and i are sitting there intently listening and then the dog gets up to reposition herself and then just <laughs> just farts <laughs> and here's the problem that's fucking hilarious all right because it's a dog fart is special all right because dogs fart like a five-year-old child, there's no shame. It's reckless right. abandon. And it's usually just like, it's an abdominal thing. Like they sit up and they move and it just sort of ekes out. <laughs> right. And it's not typically- and it, always, and it always sounds funny because they don't have butt cheeks. Yes. So it always it's, sounds it's, slightly different. Yes. All out. All right. Yes. Yeah, because it, 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 most of the time it has a very fun tone to it. It's not really bassy most of the time. You know, it's not really wet. It just is. So it's just very much a... And I'm like... And I'm sitting there going... Like, I'm just thinking about now, like... I'm trying to choke down the laugh. 
And then I'm like trying to pretend it didn't happen. And all of a sudden I'm doing the. And Joel's like, fucking stop. I'm like, stop fucking talking. Because if you're talking, if you tell me not to, my body's going to be like, we can't do this. And then it throws it into hyperdrive. And so she's over there and she starts doing the whole. And I'm sitting there like, well, you fucking quit it. Like we're trying to, this teacher's talking to us about our, chin, our kid. And here's the thing too. All right, here's the thing. The teacher has a little bit of a stuttering problem and also pronounces her R's with, as W's. So I'm very self-conscious of that. And I, I'm concerned that if we start laughing, she's going to think we're laughing at her. <laughs> Which just, again, we're doubling up. Uh, my body's like, we got to get this out. But my, my mind's like, we can't do this right now. So chill, just turns away. Like she just turns off, like focusing down. I'm like, fuck you. Because I'm sitting like right here in front of the camera. I'm like, I can't do that. So I'm trying to do this. But then it looks like I'm just covering my mouth and I'm like trying so hard and I just hear, I just hear Jill just start laughing and I'm like, well, you fucking quit it. And so I have to grab my arm. I have to grab my arm and I just start squeezing. I'm like, focus on the pain, focus on the pain. And then I, I put it at bay and it's good. And then I was oh, like, oh my God. I'm like, oh God, I made it. I'm like, I can't believe I almost laughed. And then it came rushing back because like my defenses were down and it was like, oh yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> no, like just grabbing onto my bicep and just being like, well, you fucking knock it off. And we finally, we make it through. And as soon as it's over, Jill and I just laugh uncontrollably. I'm like, I can't believe that fucking happened. Like just in this moment, this, 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 this dog fart just set us off. And it was the fucking, ugh. It was wild. It was so wild. I don't think there's anything more pure uh, uh, than, or, or like, there's a laughter no more pure than like being in a situation like that because that is just raw, amazing laughter. I've had to, yes, I've had similar situations where I have to fucking bite in my arm. That's how I, one day I found out I was like, I should get braces. My, my <laughs> <from brush. laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna fix this. Yeah, it's good. It's it's uh, uh, and then and then today today. All right. My wife goes into the city. All right. She had to commute in because she had to clean out some stuff from her desk. So I was at the house with the dog. So I had to change up my normal routine instead of just being in my office all day with the dog. I'm like, all right, I've got meetings for like two hours. I'll go downstairs with my laptop and I'll give her some some room to roam and everything like that. She's pretty good. And then I'm in the middle of a team meeting and then she like plops down next to me everyone's like oh look it's the dog i'm like yeah 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 she's here and then as we're starting to wrap things up like the dog had hopped down and all of a sudden she was like hey i wonder if i could cannonball onto his lap so here i am just doing whatever all of a sudden she just goes hi -ya! boom onto my lap i'm like jesus and she farts again just <laughs> and i'm like god it smells and i'm sitting here like just it's like cloverfield as the camera's just <laughs> moving. And I'm like, I'm like, I was trying to do like a slow zoom in. <laughs> Why do you play that? Like, oh my God. Um, oh. And, and so like, everyone just sees me and I'm on mute and I'm just like, ah, you know, and it just smells bad cause she farted. And then she's just, she takes a moment and she lays there all proper. And then she just starts attacking my thumb. And I'm like, God damn it. It was just the, it was, it was, it was, it was a wonderful couple of days. The best part was in the team meeting, people got a kick out of it. And I was like, that's fine. But with the parent teacher conference, I'm like, this is not the time to lose my mind. I got to ask you with the parent teacher conference, were you muted at the time? Nope. Is there a chance the teacher heard it? It's possible. We have, it's one of those things where it was quiet enough. I don't think it picked it up because yeah. it, was, it was, you know, but there's no way to know for sure. And I mean, especially because if we were laughing and she had heard that, she must have been like, oh, wow, the, Doug obviously farted because it couldn't have been Jill, right? She right. farts. <laughs> but it could have been me, right? It definitely couldn't have been me. Um, and it was just, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wild. It was wild. Dude, I totally, while you told the entire story, I forgot that this was quarantine. And I was like, how did she not also hear the fart? Like, they're she in the same in room. <laughs> <laughs> like what an idiot like she's bad hearing too come on <laughs> that 
That was those are the best moments though after the fact, right? Because you never laugh harder yeah. than when you can't laugh. You're not supposed to laugh. Like it's forbidden fruit and your right. body knows it. You're trying to suppress this thing that normally gets to come out and you're just like, "Oh god." And it just makes it worse. And then Jill and I, we yeah. just we make it worse for each other. I'm just again thinking about it. I'm getting the giggles just as she's trying not to laugh. I'm trying not to laugh. It's it's the worst, man. It's just the absolute I worst. I've been on a team meeting before where so similar, not with a fart, but some like we'll have like a side message going and someone will call something out ridiculous that happened in the meeting and someone sends like the perfect gif or something. And you're looking down at that and you're like, oh, no, oh, no. And then you see them on the meeting and they're looking at the camera. You know, they're looking at your box and they know you're <laughs> looking at their box and you just start going like, all right. Okay. <sighs> breathe through it just breathe through it because <laughs> as the boss is talking you don't want be want to be the one going like <laughs> i do that i do that with a co-worker and i immediately as soon as i send something i, I pop back over and i watch her and i've seen her just go like and i'm like you gotta hide it you gotta hide it because they're like hey what's going on and she's like nothing i'm like and they, they literally go are you uh are you slacking with doug i'm like hey hey you don't know i'm the imposter here Yet you have no evidence to back that up. But they're like, are you and Doug slacking? I'm like, stop it. Stop it. Yes, but stop it. Absolutely. But, but not to, don't worry about it. Yeah. Right. Uh, I've actually, I had a teacher in high school. She was like a very strict math teacher. And uh, so it wasn't like, there was just that added pressure that you need for this situation. And dude, out of nowhere, she ripped ass. And then it was like, excuse me. And oh my, she couldn't, she couldn't like yell at us because we were laughing at her fart. And so we just kind of, I mean, I was still trying to control it, but oh my God, me and this one buddy, I don't think I heard another word she said for the rest of the class. Tears. I was trying my best. I just, the authoritarian, you know, the math teacher, very strict, like a full blouse, like she has like just, you know, chastity belt from when she was born, still mm -hmm. on and just ripped it. I was like, oh, they're human. Well, that's the best part. That's the best part when that stuff happens is because I, uh, I, you know, I was, uh, I'm a, I was a corporate trainer and now I'm an instructional designer, but at one point I was preg. doing some, I thought you said preg. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm pregnant. And I was... <laughs> talking and i have like senior level like new hires that are starting and everything like that and i just totally mix up my words and i say so when you're gonna sex them up like just just in you know just totally whatever and i just i immediately stopped i turned and everyone just lost it and i'm just like let's just sit in this moment and let's just enjoy this moment like mm -hmm. i fucked up my words and everyone's laughing and i just i smile i'm a little embarrassed but i'm like i'm like uh, that's not what you should do. What you should do is, and then I go back into it. Uh, and it was just, it was a great moment because me personally too, like I wouldn't want to fart in front of a class, but you know, I, I know what you mean. It's like there's humanity there where especially mm -hmm. someone who's so uptight and just, you know, <laughs> everything to, to be like, Oh, you fart too. I forgot. You know? Uh, yeah. Oh, the queen farts. Right. We're all, <laughs> it's all fine. We're even. Everyone takes painful shits. Exactly. Everyone's got hot snakes every now and again, you know? Everyone's got the bubble uh, gut. Yep. Yeah. And the warm whispers. Yep. <laughs> My favorite, though, was when I would... Yep. Warm we, whispers. We've all had those. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's the demon. That's the devil talking to you right there. Um, I was working at a... What you say, devil? I'm... That's what I thought you said. <laughs> There's a demon inside of me. <laughs> um, I was working at a hotel and it was just me for the shift. And so like the front office manager had like left and I totally just farted and it was bad. It was like one of those really like dense fogs that just like sort of hangs around. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. I'm like, whew, glad she wasn't around. As soon as I said that she pops back in. I'm like, oh God, she <laughs> walks through it. And I'm like. What are you gonna do? Like, I'm. I, it was someone else who was here behind the desk. Just. Did you say like? I think that's a real <laughs> trick. It's like, do you just kind of like, like, you just own it and stay there and do pretend like I don't nothing. I don't know what's happening. Or do you look at them and be like, 
That came out of side of me. It was in me, and now it's out, and now it's in your nose. Feel it. I just want to be like, I thought I was alone. <laughs> I thought I had some alone time. You weren't supposed to come back yet. <laughs> One of my favorite games before quarantine was, uh, we've had him on the podcast many times before, uh, but I work with with uh, Rob uh, Ballmeyer, who, uh, again, we've had on the podcast, and he uh, he's a manager where we work. And so when he would hold a meeting, he'd get into the conference room or whatever little side room, you know, 10 minutes early to kind of prep everything, get his slides. So I would see him and I'd pop in and I'd be like, hey, man, what's going on? And he'd look at me, he goes, don't do it. I'd be like, what are you talking about? And then just let it as as best I could and be like, all right, cool. So look, have a great meeting and uh, tell me how it goes after you get out. And I would close the door and I would walk out and about like, sure, sure enough. Couple minutes later, in comes the team, <laughs> and they have. The, and he's got a with that. <laughs> I cannot tell you the amount of time I must have done that to him. I mean, fifteen plus times. I I love that more than I can express. Oh my god, that <laughs> and is. And it's not like he can amazing. stop me from coming in, like. Because what, are we going to have a physical altercation in the <laughs> office? You can't stop me from coming in. <laughs> So he, he just. <laughs> What's that? Has he done it back to you? Has there been? No, I don't hold meetings. <laughs> I ruin them. I ruin them. I don't hold them. I declined a promotion just so I could keep. <laughs> hey, look. Uh, listen, we've got a great salary bump for you. It's going to be great right. professional development, Justin. I I'm so excited. This is. We really want you to be part of our leadership. Wait, what? Did you just no, fart? You. Wait, what? Hold on. You don't just. Did you just fart and say no? Uh, no, I believe. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? We'll give you more money. I see. This is a negotiation tactic. Okay. All right. All right. Let's give him double vacation. Just a little spits at the end there. He got oh. to the point though where he would know because I would I would come in and I would specifically like I would lean over a chair to kind of like you know elongate the torso, make room for it. And as soon as I leaned over, he'd go, "You don't, you're not gonna do it. You're gonna do it, aren't you?" And just, yeah. Oh, that's so great. I, that's that's the one reason I miss being in the office. <laughs> the one reason <laughs> to fart in other people's spaces yeah, and then walk away in Rob's office yeah <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a, a whole um, when I was in high or middle school 8th grade specifically we had Spanish class in the morning and I am not a morning person and uh, I would kind of sit with my, my two homies next to me and every time I would do um a warm whisper because I had woke it. My, my digestion gets messed up when I'm not sleeping well. And no one could pinpoint me for a year. I was just letting them go. I've had my, my teacher had said like, that is smelly. And I'm like, hey, I agree. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, harumph. Yeah. <laughs> who, who does do that? Uh, you, have you heard about the math teacher? Um, finally, at the end of the year, we all had like, we were all going to like, promise we would like do one truth or dare with people and uh my truth was to let them know that for a year they had been smelling my farts one full <laughs> year <laughs> and then we got our mormon to swear so i was like this is the best year of my life wait wait hold on what you got the mormon to swear tell me more yeah so i forgot to mention i was born uh one town away from hill Camora, the or origin place of uh, mormonism so there oh, was a wow. few mormons in my town and there was one i mean honestly most of them were like really nice people i didn't understand like people would make fun of them and i'm like I, they seem incredibly regular they seem like very kind people um but they wouldn't he wouldn't drink mountain dew which i found very weird and that was kind of a core uh piece of my friendship with anyone i'm like you want to come over and have mountain dew and uh, if, if you can't do that, you can't hang. And, uh, Did you grow up in Missouri? No, nah, dude. No, no, no. Hill Camorra in upstate New York. That seems like a very Missouri thing. Hey, man, you want to come over and have some Mountain Dew? Woo! You know? 
it was very specific to my house. This was not like other people weren't doing this. This was just I got a possum chained, uh, tied up to a tree. Let's go punch it. We don't have a punch a bag. Let's punch a possum, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know, actually. You know, I said yes, and I feel like I lied. I don't know. <laughs> you ever get caught in one of those situations where you're like, I want to agree here, and then you're like, but I don't know if I do. Every day. Every day. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. Anyway, I got the Mormon to swear, and I was very. What did he say? What? What? What's? What swear? What was it? Yeah, what was it? Damn. Oh, damn. come know. on! I was hoping it would be cunt or something. You know. <laughs> I didn't even know. I cunt had not entered my <laughs> vocabulary yet. <laughs> Amazing. Speaking of cunts, uh, I hear you are reading the Dark Tower series. Oh. Absolutely. I am currently on book four, nearly through the end of it. It's my bedtime book. Nice. I love it. That's adorable. What? Um, I, so that's Wizard and Glass? Yes, yes. And I, so I began this journey many years ago because I'm a wildly infrequent reader and I read no less than five books at a time, meaning I finish a book like, it's very spread out because I'm like, I'll read three pages from this today and then leave it there for four months and then come back to another part. It's a terrible design. Uh, but <laughs> I, I started uh, the the Gunslinger, like, man, that must have been like 2014, like six years ago. Wow. So it's taken about six years to get through the fourth book. So probably by 2025, you might be done with the whole series? That's a little ambitious. But okay. Yeah, I'll see, if, I'll see if we can get there. I want to go like, three more presidents and then I'll, I'll call it a day. That seems fair. That seems like mm -hmm. a good one. How That's cool. In the series? Seven. Seven. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Five and seven are very long. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Really? Yeah. And Stephen King, man, he, I love him to death. Hands down my favorite author. It is a phenomenal book. And yeah. he needs to use less words, I think. Well, I appreciate his approach, which is that he just goes and he very much is about dynamic characters and he just that that's the bad thing is a lot of times his stories take about a third of the book to start ramping up but goddamn when they ramp up and they get going it's like hold on to your butts we're going for a ride oh, oh my god yes every time um i think literally the only book that i didn't care for from him was pet cemetery mm -hmm. and that was i mean it did its job i just felt sad the whole fucking time yeah it was too much sorrow but, yeah i mean he <laughs> delivered on his goal that's the yeah. thing it's, it was very intentional yeah uh what books have you read of his like what's your what's your number one steve king uh it's a tough call because uh i love the stand that's one of my favorites it is, is very it good. The thousand plus pages. That's the thing. Cause I, I always look at it and I never do it. Um, so you're talking about the stand or it? Cause they're both hefty no, I boys. Did it, and that's okay. Why I was like, okay, I did one of his really long books <laughs> and I don't know if I can do another. I, I mean, the stand is one of my favorite books. It's so good. Um, you know, you got Randall flag in there, you know, as the antagonist, you got all I, it's actually, I referenced that tonight because, uh, my daughter was trying to tell a story and she stopped mid sentence and just had her mouth open and she was just staring at us. She just goes, and I just started laughing. <laughs> and she was like, what? I go, well, first of all, it's funny. You're in the middle of a sentence and just, I go, what's great. I go is because there's a character in that book who is uh, mentally stunted and Stephen King describes him as talking and then it's he the way he describes him as though someone has unplugged his brain and he's waiting to be plugged back in and that has always stuck with me when i see people sort of like do stuff like that i'm like oh they've been unplugged and then and then she caught, caught back up she's stuck on the, and then she got they rebooted the router she's good to go she's back in it and um <laughs> yeah there's some phenomenal characters in that whole story and um I mean, uh, the stand is referenced in the book you're in right now. Well, yeah, I mean, the very, very beginning of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually curious because I kind of forgot about um, Justin. I, I, are, are spoilers okay to be discussed here? Like, are you going to be upset if, if we discuss any detail? 
I do plan on some point in my life reading the Dark Tower series. I can keep it vague, very vague. All I was going to say is I forgot that there's the main story occurring because this this other story has taken so long in this book. <laughs> And I love it. I actually <laughs> like it more. I'm like, I kind of don't want to go back to the main story. I want to continue with this, like, because I'm really enjoying what's going on right now. I'm like all in. Uh, Is it like, where Roland loses his virginity? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. and his fingers the same night. Um, it's all part of the sexual act. Yeah, it's tough. so it's a, a crossover with the indie film Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna reference okay, yeah. the dentata again? <laughs> I have, is that movie worth it? I have always had that. I love horror, and that one has always escaped me. It, that and Human Centipede. Never seen either of them. Yeah, I'm cool with not seeing either. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're going to watch one <laughs> over the other, if like you're sitting down and you're like, you know what? In my life, it's not going to be complete. I'm going to die with regret unless I see one of these movies. I would suggest Teeth. Over I, Human Centipede. I okay because that is kind of where I'm at because I've almost depleted uh, American horror. Um, Let's stop I you right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook you up with Drew. He's gonna he's gonna re he's gonna replenish that well. You do not have to resort to teeth quite yet. Yeah, he's got other ones for you. <laughs> he's, he, he, there yeah. has to be something else. He's a horror aficionado. So can you uh, say that one more time? He's a horror yeah. aficionado. You know what? We're going to leave it with that. Yeah. yeah. He pays for sex, and he knows a lot about it. Uh. <laughs> oh, good. I th I was worried you were saying horror aficionado, but I'm glad and it's And it's a terrifying experience, a part of yes. American culture, and it bleeds through into his work, literally and figuratively. Yeah. Accurate. I mean, the true horror is STDs and unsafe sex, so I mean, right? it does make sense. Yeah. Exactly. What I would recommend to you, Seth, is obviously once you're done with the series, Marvel uh, has done a comic book series of the Dark Tower. And it starts with uh, a comic book version of Wizard and Glass. And that's actually, I accidentally, I told my wife I wanted to start reading that, that series. And she bought me the, the comic. And mm -hmm. I ended up reading the comic version of Wizard and Glass first before I actually read The Gunslinger. And my brother had read it. He's like, no, you should have done that. I actually feel like it enhanced the story for me because mm -hmm. I knew all of Roland's backstory before. So like when I read The Gunslinger and he comes across that guy in the town, right, who's playing the mm -hmm. piano and he mm -hmm. sees him and that guy sees him and about shits his pants and he tries to kill Roland and Roland basically is like, I remember who you are. I remember what you did. I'll fucking kill you Whoa. if you come back here. That I, I understood that reference. So I was like, okay. Um, that was pretty cool because I had read that comic already. I already knew. And I knew I understood a lot of his story and why he was doing what he was doing. I actually feel like it enhanced the story for me. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it it's, go for it. Oh, no, I was just going to say that's amazing. I, okay. So this is why I feel like my approach is so bad. So I think I might just dive right into the next book and not lollygag anymore because I va only vaguely recall the piano, like that whole first town, that whole first scene in the book was amazing. And I'm like, I don't really remember the specifics. I remember the general feeling it gave me, which is fuck, this dude's a badass. Like that is a gunslinger. This is so cool. Um, just lit up a whole, well, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, he lit up his pipe and he puffed on it. He puffed on that pipe. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I'm gonna knock you over, Florida. Uh, yeah. I would, I highly recommend the comic too because it's beautifully drawn. And I read Doug yes. the comic, so I have read as much as that story covers. And the comic actually it. fills in more gaps because it's told they're doing the comics chronologically. And so they do Wizard and Glass, but then they tell more, which you never actually read about in the books. Uh, itself so it actually fills in more information as to you know some of these other characters that are just sort of like Cuthbert uh, and some of these other characters you actually see their full story as to like what happens to them whereas they're only kind of like they're obviously they dive into a little of them, a bit of it in Wizard and Glass and then they kind of go on mm -hmm. from there so um, you know I just highly recommend those and I really um, when you finish those uh, let's talk because I'd love to get your reaction yes. to them 
I think yeah, be- I mean, even after like this one, because I'm very curious to see who you're referencing as the piano player. And mm-hmm. I'm like, who could that be? Um, another thing is I find like, man, the characters are so I like Cuthbert. I love that character. I think that's yeah. a great character. I'm like, keep this going. Eddie, not in it. Don't like Eddie. Find him very irritating. Hang in there. Hang in there with Eddie. Okay. Hang in there with him. He's... He'll come as around. Soon as he discovers his love of dance, it really opens up the story. <laughs> and honestly, once he finally defeats the space vampires, I mean, that's when you know what's funny is that joke normally is like, oh, that's a joke, but with with, with Stephen King, that could be real. You just don't know. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that could be true. I was like, damn, all right. Yeah, it, it could be a thing. Have you read uh, any American Vampire, which is awesome? No. No, I have not. Okay. I highly recommend it. It does. It kind of feels like if the gunslinger, uh, it's got that Western vibe, at least the very first one, but with like vampires. And hmm. I don't want to describe much more, but it was like, it's, it's, uh, what is it? Raphael. The artist is amazing. The artwork is super brutal and super cool. I love it. Like super good character design, super interesting characters. And just like, just a good story there's like seven of them hmm. um there does they do end up going to space and i'm like maybe we went a little <laughs> too far at a certain point because it is space vampires but i'm like everything else this uh, looks really cool fantastic this looks yeah, really I cool highly, highly recommend it it's like that and preacher are the only two yeah novels i've really read yeah like, ah. preacher's great i'll have to check that out i have to check out the library and see if they they have those to check out because I would like to read those. It looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's also interesting is in, you know, uh, there's actually Stephen King makes references to Harry Potter and other things in That's in his really? books. He does. There's there's a very specific Harry Potter reference uh, in book five. Also, there's a Marvel reference in book five as well, which is cool. absolutely fascinating. Um, it's very strange, but interesting. Are you a Harry Potter fan, Seth? I, I love... Seamless. Better transition. Um, Seamless. The first four as a a a youth, a a boy, um, and then I decided I ain't got I ain't got to do no reading. I stopped reading until the Gunslinger actually for about ten years because I was just like people told me to read things, and Mm -hmm. I was like, "Mm -mm, I'm not gonna read. (laughs) This isn't. This can't be a leisure activity. (laughs) Yeah, I'm gonna live at home Uh, (laughs) (laughs) and uh so but i do love it and like my god like the 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 movie series that's a visual weighted blanket like who doesn't get their anxiety removed upon watching like ron freak out about spiders (laughs) 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 um yeah i i i think it's interesting because uh i didn't actually i think i went to see the first Harry Potter because they had a trailer for episode one of Star Wars beforehand. That's the only reason why I went. Um, you were that. My brother's that like, my brother was like, let's go to the movies. I hear that there's a trailer before. Let's. Go. I'm like, fine, let's go. I enjoyed it. My brother was like, whatever. Uh, and it's tough with the first couple because they are very childish. But um, I watched them all the way up, and then I watched f- the fifth one, Order of the Phoenix. I'm like, you know what? I gotta just read these books because I'm so into the story. I kind of want to see how it ends. And at that point. The, the seventh book had come out so i was able to start i blew through all of them and then like i was like god this is such good good stuff like it's it's really well done and i look forward to like natalie my daughter has started watching some of the movies and things like that i haven't shown her all of them because i'm like the later ones i'm like you're gonna get scared so yeah. but she's watched one through four um and bits of five but she hasn't gotten all the way through five but um she's she enjoys them and i think they're great i think they're really 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 wonderful what do you think about fantastic beasts and where to find them up your butt um i think that the first one i definitely enjoyed there's what three out so far i think two two Two? there's two okay And then I deeply despise the second one all right tell me why and i was like it's not the first tell me why you like the first one and tell me why you deeply despise the second one I, I I mean the thing is so the first one I it was it did not hold up to Harry Potter by any means um, but I thought it was good because I I mean I think more than anything I really enjoy just going back into the universe 
Like it's like it's like Star Wars. Any any reason for me to go back, I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. I mean, just fucking whatever it is, just let me let me go back. Right. So like you have that. And then I think that I don't know, the first one, like I enjoyed the characters and I I thought that they were like uh I don't know. I just I had fun with the first one and the second one felt like the I don't know if the writing, I can't place what it was. And also, I really do think that I suppressed whatever happened in the second one to the depths of my mind because I put it out. I know I watched it and I can't tell you what happened. It's forgettable. I think it was just, yeah, it was, I think it was so wildly underwhelming yeah. that it wasn't actively bad. It was just actively nothing to me. That's a I great, think that's fair. That's a great way of saying it. Yeah. I think I, I enjoyed, similar to you, I enjoyed the, um, the, the the original series so much and like you know uh just the movies like you it's a perfect way of saying it is that it's like it's like a weighted blanket for you because mm-hmm. you feel you watch me like ah i like being in this i like being in this world it's just something very you you, you wish you could experience this and live in it with them um i don't mm-hmm. know if you either of you have been to universal the not Harry yet Potter. i really want to go but i haven't been yet Beth and I went uh, at the very beginning of this year, like in February, before all the shit hit the fan. And we we went and uh, it was like I, something happened in my brain and I reverted back to a child. And I was just like, ah, it's the dragon. <laughs> and it, I'm going to get a wand. And like it was just so fucking cool. So immediately I came home. I'm like, well, I'm watching all these movies again and just plowed right through them. And it was so awesome to live in that. And I think with the first Fantastic Beasts, that's exactly what it was. You're like, I this is just another chance to live in that world. And as much as I was like, this is cool, it just it was missing something. You know, like you have a really good dish, like a or a, a plate of food, and then you try to make it again. You're like, ah, it's just there's something missing for that one ingredient, and I can't place my finger on it. Mm-hmm. And it's not quite as satisfying. And the second one just completely solidified that, that the chef was, you know, no longer working in this kitchen. I, uh, I, I was originally, I have trouble with prequels because they typically fall into the same trap. Almost all of them. There's a couple of them that are really great and avoid this, but it over explains the past to make links to the future. And that's where I felt like the second movie fell short. The first one was a little boring for me. I appreciated what they were doing because I like the idea of like, ooh, early 1900s in America. It's like, whoa, what's their magic society like? Like, this will be cool. We'll get to explore that. I really wasn't a huge fan of Eddie Redmayne's character. I'm like, he just seems real, I don't know. I don't know. It just it, Everything about it was just kind of like meh to me and everything. And then... The second one was like, we're going to really over explain and do unnecessary fan service. Like, hey, uh, did you want to know that Nagini was originally a woman? And there she is. There's Nagini. Oh, did you want to hear uh, Nicholas Flamel? He makes a cameo appearance in this as well. And it's just, I don't know. It's, I do like, you know, the idea of like, oh, we get to explore what's going on with Grindelwald. And but also just the timing and stuff doesn't doesn't make sense. Like they messed up the timeline in, in terms of how it actually relates to everything else. And it also then leads to silliness like, hey, Dumbledore's a hot looking dude in a three piece suit. How do you go from that to this dude that just wears these ridiculous robes like, in a, wait, in what? A span, in a span of no more than 70 years. Yeah. Or, or like, or, I'm sorry, not 70 years, uh, 50 years. Yeah. Just like, like it's like the thirties and then we're in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's just like beautiful, hot looking Jude law. And he's just like, Hey, check me out in this suit. I'm like, I don't think that's, I don't think right. that's the thing. I don't think that's you what she that did. Jump? That's a, that's a minimum hundred year jump to go yeah. from what, that to that. Yeah. Well, the other thing is like, okay. So a, a wizard, I get it because like, or at least when I picture an adult, uh, I, I feel like, who is it? Seinfeld has a bit about how uh, you can tell when a man turned 40 be, or, or at what age, or what decade he turned 40 because his clothing freezes in time. And then that's the clothing he has for the rest of his life. That's just, he's a 90 year old and zip offs or whatever the fuck. And Dumbledore, you can't go to older time clothing than you had. He had more modern clothes 
uh, you know, 50 years ago. It just doesn't add up. I fully agree with that. And then also they were almost just like dancing around the fact that he was gay. Like they, I don't feel like they handled that very well at all. They had these, it was almost like overt, like painfully overt and then incredibly subdued at the same time, if that makes any sense. Like they're cutting to him and Grindelwald, like smashing their hands together as they're making their pact. And they're like, Ugh! and then it kind of cuts away. It, it was just like, I felt like it was handled so poorly <laughs> and how they're like, he's gay. You think, you know, or like, I don't know. It was just really weird how they handled it. And, you know, it just seems like we're, we're overly complicating things because it's, it's sort of like the Mandalorian, right? I like the idea of the Mandalorian because we're exploring a facet of Star Wars that is connected in this time frame of the series, but we're not really too like, hey, where's Luke and Leia? And it's like, no, we're focusing on this character, exploring different parts of the universe. We're expanding the universe. I feel like this is a missed opportunity to do that with Harry Potter and that we get to explore all these other things, but we don't necessarily have to be like, hey, here's Dumbledore, and he's going to be fighting Grindelwald. It's like, ah, do we need to tell that story? Because it's kind of already been told. Like, we know Dumbledore defeats him. Like, mm-hmm. we know where that's going to end up. In fairness, Doug, it took Star Wars 40, 45 years to figure that out. So you got oh, to yeah. some time for <laughs> this series to, in another, in another, in another fucking uh, 25 years, we're going to be right on track. <laughs> Jared goes, it's almost like JK is full of shit and too scared to bring the gay. <laughs> she has been known to struggle on sensitive topics. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Which, which is a great, you know, segue to the next piece of this, which is do you think this franchise can survive one with, I think, in my opinion, the lackluster story and two everything that's happening behind the scenes between what J.K. Rowling's going through and then also Johnny Depp just got asked to leave the project. He did. Still got paid for it because he signed a contract. But it just seems like there's a lot happening here that I think is going to affect the series long term. But what do you guys think? Is this going to survive or not? I Well, I guess I don't know. Well, first of all, um, my question is, what is their plan in terms of like, is it they just wanted a trilogy here like what was their their goal i think there's gonna be more i see i thought it was a true i thought they were going for a trilogy that's what i thought but i think they're actually gonna do four or five if i'm not mistaken you're right i think she think it is five i think they i think they expanded it because i think originally it was but then they got greedy this is my guess i don't know for sure but when they said actually this could be four or five i'm like you greedy fucks like just tell the goddamn story and that's like that's all David Yates is doing now is just yep no you're right it is three four and five he's slated to direct hmm. so he did the last two or three or three or four actual Harry Potters and then all I think he Fantastic started Beasts. with the first two and then he did like the last couple Harry Potters and then I think he's done the Fantastic Beasts he did Order of the Phoenix Half Blood Prince then the two Deathly Hollows mm-hmm. so he did the last four. Mm-hmm. So he's then, responsible for the dark shading in yeah. all of the other ones because they were very warm and cozy, and he's just like dark filter. But the thing was, movies. that's kind of how the stories went, though. The books went well, that yeah, way too. Yeah, yeah they it grew does. up. So I appreciate that because the thing too is like what I did like about the Fantastic Beasts. The first one was just too fucking many. Was um the the Flash? I forget the the the, the actor's name, but the guy who plays the Flash, oh, Ezra Miller. Oh, yeah. Yes. I loved that character and I loved what was going on with him with like what his being is like that was really really cool also yes the other thing I hated about the second one is they're just making this ties to Dumbledore right like he's a Dumbledore like this character is he's somehow blood related I'm like why are we overly complicating this why are we complicating why didn't we know about this character before especially in the books we talked about Dumbledore's family it's like this could be a half brother it's just like god damn it why are we doing this this is like some Game of Thrones or some fucking Star Wars shit where it's like they're all related it's like fucking knock it off but um, it's just I don't know I, I I think it's from a production standpoint and a PR standpoint this has to be incredibly difficult to navigate what's going on with JK Rowling because I know a lot of diehard fans. Like we had Jamie Jirak on here recently. She's a, a writer for comicbook.com. A diehard Harry Potter fan. She fucking hates it now. Like she's completely disowned it. 
Uh, she posted a picture on Twitter of her ripping up a magazine with J.K. Rowling's face on it on the cover. She's basically like, I'm done with this. Like, if this woman doesn't support these types of people or keeps battling this, I'm out. And I know a lot of people that feel the same way. And then you got this Johnny Depp stuff, which I'm not going to get into what's going on with him and his personal life. But the fact that they asked him to leave, casting changes like that, they can kind of go either way, right? Sometimes you get someone else that can come in and do it. I kind of like Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. I thought he was fine. I think he was good. Um, I don't know yeah. who you're going to come in to, you know, well, backfill that. There's a rumor that Mads Mikkelsen is, is going to be stepping into the role now. Not mad at that. Ooh. Not mad at that at all. That yeah. guy is fucking no, awesome. I think that's, that's progress, honestly. <laughs> and, you also have to think. Well, but there's there's two things. One, uh, Johnny Depp was barely in the first one. So yeah. right. it's not a huge loss. The other thing is um, – in the original Harry Potter series, Dumbledore was also replaced, and they mm-hmm. kept stride perfectly. So yeah. Yeah. they've done it in the past. And then uh, just a side note, wasn't there some fucking movie where it was like Jude Law, mm-hmm. John, maybe Johnny Mr. Depp? Yep. Um, fe, fe, Dr. Parnassus. Well, you know they were all one person. Yes, because uh, yeah. Heath Ledger passed away. Immediately, I went to Mr. Megorium's one room. And I, I always do that too. I always do that too. Yeah, yeah. Heath Ledger passed away in the middle of filming it, and Jude Law, uh, Colin Farrell, Johnny Depp, and all of them stepped in. I think at no cost to basically help fill out the rest of the film, yeah. which I thought was really cool. So, the all we need to do is mm-hmm. recast, uh, replace Johnny Depp with uh, Heath Ledger's corpse, and they're, <laughs> they've got the same movie again. We can do holograms. James Dean did it. James Dean James is in a new movie, so there you go. I mean, anything's possible. I mean, we could just call it a day and put James Dean in this. Anytime someone steps <laughs> out of the wall, we just put in James Dean. Right? <laughs> you know what? Here comes James Dean as Grindelwald. <laughs> we, we can do holograms, but only James Dean. Exactly. <laughs> only we James kinda, Dean. We kind of sunk all our money into this. <laughs> we Listen, went all in on James Dean. <laughs> this technology... <laughs> Is broken beyond repair. The only thing it can do is James Dean. So we can't add anything else to it. We we, we just can't. We uh, probably should not have taken financing from our 90-year-old grandmother. She yeah. definitely <laughs> had a lot of sway in which one we did. Slotty says Tupac's hologram enters the chat. <laughs> Slotty also says he nominates Michael Shannon to, to backfill for Grindelwald. <laughs> That'd be interesting. That'd that be would be intense. Yeah. That's like a, a very change, angry though. Grindelwald. That would be yeah. intense as shit, man. Can you imagine right. that? Just, I mean, I loved him as Zod in Superman. Like, he did a fantastic job. Like, I can't really imagine what he'd be like with Grindelwald. <laughs> he was also really good. I mean, it's not uh, of the same caliber, uh, but uh, what was it? Shape of Water? Whatever his yeah. antagonist character was there. I thought he was amazing in that. Yeah. That's actually one I still haven't seen yet. I need to do that. Let me check that one out. You know, it's really good. Uh, I mean, I, I love Guillermo del Toro. Same. So I kind of have rose-colored glasses with anything that he does. I'm gonna Same. Get, I probably like it. Like, Pan's Labyrinth is, is great. Oh, I think, great movie. Oh, what a fucking movie. I yeah. Mean, just amazing. Um, but I think that Michael Shannon, when he was watching the Oscars, there was photos of him because they, they won the Oscar that year. And he was right over across from Second City. Uh, drinking a beer at um, yeah. the Red Apple. That one, that local bar. No, 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 it wasn't Red Apple. Oh, uh, old, old or uh, is it Buck? Old Town Ale House. I think old that's Town what it is. Ale yeah, House. yeah, yeah. I'm like, what a fucking badass, right? Like, I'm gonna go have a pint at our local dive. This is bar. where I'm like, at. Yeah, because yeah, his theater's just down the street. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. is it the Red Orchid or the Red Apple Theater or something it's, like that? I feel like it's the Red Apple Theater. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something like that, but it's literally like half a block down on the east side of uh of wells yeah oh i had no idea yeah yep and now you know you dumb shit right you idiot <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh it's accurate i i was uh, i had to quit a job as a pizza delivery person <sighs> because i i got lost in my hometown uh more than once I had a Tom Tom too, so you know roughly the time frame that this was, and I couldn't figure it out. So I was like, I ought to just call this a day. <laughs> you know what though? You recognized your limits. Oh, unlike Rudy, go. unlike Rudy oh. from the movie Rudy, you understood your limits and you called it. You called it early. It wasn't. It wasn't your strength. So good for know. you. I respect Doug, you. Doug absolutely 
hates the movie Rudy. Stuff I've never... is stupid. Stuff is dumb. Doug hates stuff. Goddamn right. I loved that. That <laughs> was great. I would like a file of that so I can leisurely listen to it. Uh, you like the I've fifth person. Rudy. Yeah. Wait, what was that? You've never seen that? Rudy? It doesn't matter. I don't even really know what Rudy's about. Here's the thing, Seth. Don't bother. Okay? Don't right, bother. So I want a list of movies just to avoid, uh, as curated by Doug. We got uh, Teeth. We got uh, Human Centipede. And I have, got Rudy I have so seen. Far. I haven't seen two of those three. I've only seen thirty-three percent of those those that you just suggested. Doug fully commits that they are terrible movies, no matter what. And I'm like, gonna listen to them. Um, <laughs> I'll say this much about Rudy, though: the shining good thing is uh, Samwise Gamgee is in it, so that's about the only good oh. thing. So Sean Astin plays. The titular Rudy, um, but it's basically about a guy who can't play football, who uh, wants to play football at Notre Dame in the 60s, and, uh, you know, by sheer willpower, he kind of does, but not really. So, <laughs> da -da. listeners have already heard me bitch about this multiple times, but, you know, I'm happy yeah. to give you the whole... The whole rundown, you know, if you'd like. And by the way, Justin, I've had multiple people say they want that song... <laughs> As a downloadable yeah. file, so... We've had, yeah, you're not the only one who's requested a file of that. So we might actually make this maybe like as like a perk or something. You got to redeem yeah. points and you can get a, uh, or bits. Maybe this is the thing we do for... Maybe people. if you're a subscriber, you get access to it or something. There maybe we go. can figure that yeah. out. Well, yeah. That's a ringtone. That's also been suggested, so... Right? That's uh, my understanding of technology. <laughs> Ringtones are still the greatest bejewel that phone. Yeah, I'm right? Put this on my Moto Razor. Ta -ta uh so kind of just kind of wrap up real quick do you guys think that the fantastic beast is going to survive or no uh, there we go survive about as well as it's been i think it's just gonna be as underwhelming and continue down its current trajectory steadily that's my my assumption i think you're I honestly, right i honestly don't know if the studios with with all the heat i don't know if they're gonna want to like i don't i literally legitimately don't know if they're gonna keep rolling on that's actually a fair point too, based on the pandemic. At, what? Wait, like Wait, you're, you're you talking rolling on, like moving forward, no, no. or rolling the J.K. Rowling. The lady. Oh, oh yeah. I, I see. I was actually, going to keep. Like, ah, I see. I see uh, what happened. There. I was like, <laughs> "Wait, what? <laughs> Are they going to keep rolling, 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 rolling? Come on!" Did it. Jervis makes a good point. Harry Potter is Warner Brothers cash cow, but at the same point, like, I think, I agree. I think, I think, Seth, I think you're right. They're going to keep pushing these out with hopes of getting some money out of the return on their investment, but I think that their critical acclaim, and I think a lot of the other stuff is going to, it's going to drop, and I don't know if it's going to be as successful as they want it to. Yeah. That makes sense. We shall I mean, have to they, see. they filmed the most recent, um, the third one, the one with, with, Johnny Depp that he was slated for? I th or, That's a great question. I don't yeah, know. Because, like, the, the the whole other thing that you have to factor in is COVID. How is COVID impacting this? They haven't filmed it. I mean, that's just a whole other wrench uh, right. that they have to consider. Um, It's slated to be, to be released in 2021. And, 2022. And, oh, so it's... Oh. Is it 2022? Well, it's... It says filming, expected July 15, right. 2022. This must be out of date then. Because it also says November 12, 2021, and then parentheses, Ireland. I don't know what that means. Hmm. Maybe <laughs> hey, that's when they uh, go back into production on it? Maybe. Potentially? Oh, this, that's new, oh, this was a day ago. Yeah, so one day ago they said uh, July 15, 2022. Okay. Per variety. So well, there you go. It's currently in production, so delayed. It's original mid-November 2021 premiere date, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's on its way. There's there's one more movie that I would recommend that you uh, that you put on your absolute watch list, though, Seth. Okay, wait, wait, do you watch or don't? Welcome to the Throwdown. It's a do watch. <laughs> My favorite thing is watching that unfold every time. But Seth's right. like stunned, like, what the fuck is happening was very what? enjoyable. 
anyone that's been on before, we have not had a theme song for the throwdown. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, that took me off guard, but like I've been ready to be off guard this whole time because once you let in with the farts, I was like, <laughs> okay, this is where I, I, I see where we're going now. Here's where we are. Yeah. We've upgraded our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, Slotty goes, watching the smile creep across his face was pretty great. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> um, especially with that mustache, just watching the corners turn up. Yeah. Oh, God. They're, they're I have a bed beard right now. Um, I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, it bed pubes, the whole thing. You know, if you're a hairy man and you wake up and you're unshowered, they're just in shapes, you know? Bed pubes? Doug is interested. <laughs> Tell me more. Uh, Okay, so if you haven't shaved your pubes in a minute, and by shaved I mean trimmed, <laughs> who shaved? Um, they can they can squish. Stop it, Doug! You're not allowed to to, to shave. Embrace the 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 burl. The burl. Look at my head! I, I mean, I I don't have much. I mean, I don't know what I'm trying to make. I don't know what point I'm trying to make. I shouldn't shave because I'm losing my hair. But what are you gonna do? You know? No, I like I like the the bald with the beard is a very good uh, aesthetic. Um, don't patronize me seth i'm not patronizing that is actually i genuinely like that like i uh am very grateful that i i am not going bald because i have seen myself uh with a shaved head and i have it just i, I have a weird skull i like everyone says that though skull. everyone says that everyone's like oh, i couldn't shave my head because it would be sorry you'd be fine you'd be fine oh, with that right. rocking that fucking mustache you'd be fine mm, that's true mm-hmm but I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to this uh, because I, I literally, I will occasionally. So to answer your question, uh, bed pubes is where if you have too much, uh, uh, bush uh, around your dick and, or, you know, vagina too, I'm sure. Um, and you sleep on it, you're, you're like bedhead, but for your pubes, it's going to be pressed down in certain areas. Um, these are just facts of life, folks. The other thing is I have to vacuum my shower. Sometimes I let it dry and then I just vacuum up all the hair because there's just like an explosion. Do you do you come hair or something like what's happening here? I shed. I mean, it's I'm, I'm head to toe uh, a hairy man. And, you know, when you shower, you're just shedding and I'm just. All right. Take off your shirt. Show me how hairy you are. OK. All right. Yeah. 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 What about that? Huh? What about that? Huh? What about that? What about that? Huh? Huh? And so that's where I see that. <laughs> <laughs> We're off topic. <laughs> I am very much not certain what just happened. I don't know how we got to this point. And here's what I'm going to say. This is one of the few times when the listeners of the podcast win. Because they didn't have to witness whatever just happened. Jared, Jared just wrote, I regret being here today. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, Slotty, I couldn't agree with you more. Yep. A little bit longer, and we were going to compare ass hair length. So Goddamn right. Stopped us. <laughs> yeah. We did. Well, that was going to a very dark place. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, yeah. Married with Gaming says, I'm not sleeping tonight. I could. I could have been at work and not been able to see the screen. Jared's lamenting the fact that he actually had to see that today. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last time Mind Gap was allowed to stream on Twitch. When <laughs> Mary closed his eyes, all he sees is my nips. You're welcome. And here's the thing. I trust Slotty enough to know that that shit was clipped and that shit of is Of course. Going out. Without a Absolutely. doubt. Absolutely. Without yeah. a doubt. That's where it belongs. Uh, because that's, that's how he does. That's how mm -hmm. we do. Okay. So today's throwdown. Uh, we got a special one in honor of you, Seth. So, Doug, mm. you ready with your voice? All ready. All right. Today's throwdown is... Randall Flagg from the Stephen King universe versus Saruman from Lord of the Rings. I think it was early on my... Sorry. <laughs> um... Oh, my God. All right. It was Randall Flagg versus Saruman. Yes. Wait, so, no, 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 no. It was, I thought it was Sauron. No, no. Saruman. The white. It was originally, oh. it was originally Sarman. Sarman? Sauron? Sauron? <laughs> Sar it, it was Sermon from the Mount. It was originally uh, Jim Sauron, but we right. decided to go to Craig Saruman. Right. 
Michael P. Spiderman. Um, <laughs> okay. So, oh, yeah, man. We, we switched because we didn't want to... You downgraded. We, we downgraded because the original one we had, one of them you didn't want to dive into because you hadn't finished the books yet. So we were like, well, let's... <laughs> Let's downgrade one, but if you downgrade one, you gotta downgrade both. So. Yeah, so that was actually, a, I'm glad you did that because I was like, this feels pretty easy uh, in terms of, again, I haven't read the state, so I don't know a ton about Randall Flagg out of, outside of him being, what, what um, is it? Walter. He, he's in, he, he's the man, uh, he's the man in black. He's, he's Wal man, yeah, Walter he's O'Dim, you know, he's yeah. he's all those guys. And, well, he's that's a, what I'm um, man by like, names. In terms of like his powers, oh man, uh, yeah. Needless to say, good choice downgrading. Um, you know, uh, Saruman or him, man. I gotta go. Well, what's great about both of these is they're both the number twos of their universe, right? Because uh, Randall Flag is number two to the Crimson King, and Saruman is the number two for Sauron. So mm -hmm. they both also covet that which they're the number one has like uh randall flag aka walter odim aka the man in black really wants to get to the dark tower and saruman actually covets the ring of sauron and wants to use it to become all powerful so they both serve their master but they also have other ideas they're both magical and they're on right they both sort of command their own armies so i think it's a pretty pretty good combination yeah, I mean, so it's 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 an interesting question because I feel like you know one of the the greatest strengths that Randall has is the interdimensional thing. I'm like that that feels like such a access point for more power, and he can also climb into the bodies of people. Isn't that right? Where he actually goes in and and controls people. I'm like that's like a superpower. But then Sauron or Saruman, dude's got a full orc army. Full arc are and are we are we going like battle to battle like they're literally like duking it out to to the finish or just who's more powerful overall? No, it's basically these two guys uh, fall through interdimensional portals, right? And they land into an arena, and of course in these Sam's club. in in Sam's Club out <laughs> in Naperville. Yes. And mm -hmm. the thing is, like these two obviously would immediately not get along. There's no way these two would ever be like, "Hey, what's up, buddy?" Um, mm -hmm. And I. Th that um what's great is that we've also seen saruman does have the ability to possess others as he does with the king of rohan so he can over mm -hmm. time influence just like flag can do uh they also have obviously access to magic they're both very charismatic in the way mm -hmm. that they approach other people with mind control Pfft, i'm looking at a site it's called mind lecture cool they yeah, can lecture that, people with their minds just sounds like you're gonna be like getting a like a 101 level class but the guy's just staring at you and you're just getting the information it's an hour-long lecture <laughs> um <laughs> flag also uh illusion casting limited casting, foresight necrophilia very high intelligence manipulation um saruman uh, magical power spell casting he has a wizard staff i love that that's something that's listed there Complete, yeah. Completely compelling voice. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing brow. I mean, come on. Uh, telekinesis, pyrokinesis, possession, divine authority over the Ishtari, you know? I, yeah, I mean, so that that's kind of giving more uh, credit to what I was thinking. I was like, I think, in my opinion, I would go Saruman because he, I feel like the the main advantage that randall would have is the fact that he's able to go through these different portals but again i don't know how that would be a benefit against saruman like in general i feel like there's a huge benefit to that but like against another wizard like what are you gonna unless he could control saruman i just don't see that being you know a game changer whereas saruman can also like cast shit and he has all of the uh telepathic powers so i'm gonna go ahead and say saruman and he's got a full fucking army here's the thing randall flag has charisma listed under his powers and skills also so, also foresight go fuck yourself he's got foresight so maybe he could see something saruman coming has four skin. 
<laughs> yeah, he That's doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't seem like a guy that would uh, get the, the old snippety dip. You know. His, he would yeah, just use his, his wizard staff. For... Yeah. Here's the thing, though, and here's always been my problem with with the Lord of the Rings stuff is like the magic in that universe is so like you don't really see them do much magic wise. Um, so it's hard to imagine him being like, you know, he, he wouldn't take a staff and be like, you know, magic missile or whatever. Like he just it's not how it works. Um, I, I was Justin, Seth and I were talking about this earlier today. I was like they're Saruman and Gandalf are more adept, at least in their portrayal, as fighting with their staves and their swords than they are with using magic. Like you just don't see much of it. So, yeah, I, I think their magic is largely like uh it's it's more that like kind of manipulation and influence thing. It's it's almost just like their magic is like they have charisma. Like I think in the eyes of Tolkien, like Hitler was magical. He's like, he's got charisma. I don't know what else he needs. Yeah, like, that's that's, that's really you're, you're not wrong. I mean, you do see minimal things like uh, you know, Gandalf can shoot lights out of his staff to scare off the Nazgul and he breaks the you know, the, he has a shield against the uh the 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 yeah. the, the uh god damn it. The, the fire demon uh, oh, guy. Uh, the Balrog. There we are. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he breaks the bridge with his staff. In The Hobbit, he does some teleportation, a magical blast in the Goblin Caverns. At, I'm like, oh, there's oh, the wait, magic. Wait, wait, wait. What teleportation? Do you remember this in The Hobbit, the very first one, the, the movie, with uh, with Ian McKellen and oh, everything? In the, the you know, Hobbit. I've only seen that one once. but He's standing in his office, and he raises his hands above, and the phoenix... <laughs> flashes and then he bursts out of the office and the other guy and goes uh he's like you know he goes uh you have to hand it to him he's got style you know <laughs> right that's uh, it I, I must have missed that part obviously it's in the extended edition right right exactly it's in the mm -hmm. four and a half hour edition yeah ah uh, beautiful well yeah. actually speaking of what you're saying though where they don't get to like blast up in the extended edition of it wouldn't be Two Towers, Return of the King, I want to say. Mm -hmm. One of them. Um, Saruman ah. actually shoots a, a fireball down at them like after the Ents have already taken over. So that yes. is one time where there's a projectile used. That's true. And then it's just, of course, Gandalf just absorbs it. You know, yeah, and, once he's yeah. in his clean, angelic, uh, yeah. about the white light. But again, when you see him cast a fireball, it's like, where's this been the whole time? Like, why haven't you done this before? Like, I just, you know, you have those powers and just, yeah, mm -hmm. it's never used. It's like, okay. I don't know. I, I still have to say, though, just as a wizard, he's, he, I feel like that puts him at an elevated, because he can do magic. Like, we've <sighs> seen, like, we've seen that fireball. And he's listed with like the pyrokinesis possession, telekinesis uh, as well. Blasts, yeah, like you know, and he just carries that wizard staff like a fucking champ. Yeah, well, I would say. Go ahead, Seth. There was also in one of the Hobbit movies. There was the moment where like it was him, Gandalf. Um, oh, I can't think of his name, but the head of Rivendell. All of them when they came to like save. I forget who, or maybe they were saving Gandalf from when they were like, it was the necromancer when it was actually Sauron yeah. Yeah. in the woods. They were like action heroes. They were yeah. essentially the Avengers when they were doing that. And Saruman was just like bonking orcs, like left and right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, th that capability was not there in the other Lord of the Rings at all, but clearly he's capable of it. Yeah, I think, I think Flag's big ability is his manipulation and i don't think he would be e it would be easy to manipulate saruman saruman is also incredibly intelligent and charismatic and um you know it doesn't based on what i'm looking at for his stats here he doesn't ne it doesn't necessarily showcase a lot of other abilities you know and i think even the limited stuff we've seen with saruman is still more than what we've seen with flag in that regard I'd say that Flag doesn't have obviously his his scheming nature allows him to set things in motion, but he's rarely in the thick of the fight. He's more or less right. setting people up to fail and then coming in when it's most advant advantageous to himself to basically stab someone or something like that. So I would think that based on that, Saruman would be more apt to defeat him in a throwdown. Yep. Yeah. All right. I, so uh, are we going to agree? We're going to call this then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Saruman for the win! <laughs> Guys, it happened. It did happen. We threw that.
I'm so glad we did this. And Seth, I'm so glad you came back, man. This was so much fun. I really was. And uh, Doug, I really want to nerd out with you with a lot of this anymore. Justin. Yes. Always great to see your beautiful hey. face. Yes. Um, so this but, is the this is the part of the show. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead, please continue. I was just gonna say thank you. No, that was it. You're welcome, sir. Um, so this is our uh, yeah. And Saudi says join our Discord because there's plenty of other fellow nerds we could all talk and sh Let's shoot the it. shit. So please, by all means. Uh, but this is the part of the show where we we want to make sure we give you an opportunity to plug anything that you have going on. You're not in social media, so obviously you don't have to plug that. But uh, anything you'd like to promote, if there's anything you'd like. And TV show, uh, uh, movie, oh. books, music, anything like that, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, I mean, I, I, I know I did this last time, uh, but I do want to uh, always recommend Big Trouble Little China at every opportunity. <laughs> uh, it's the best movie of all time. So if you haven't seen it, it's the best. Um, oh, you know what I would recommend is on Shudder, uh, the horror streaming service, if, if folks are not uh, familiar, there is a Spanish movie called Terrified, and I love horror movies. And this is the first horror movie in, I don't recall when, that actually gave me a nightmare. Hmm. And it, it's it's wow. very fun. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's actually scary. Like it's, it's like a wild ride and it's all supernatural, which is my jam. So that is gonna be my main recommendation. Uh, I have not successfully gotten anyone to watch it, so please watch it. Um, and as for projects, uh, uh watch our release on on friday uh the quarantine files watch that episode uh that's like the only big thing i got going on right now so fantastic watch that subscribe to to going outside that's my other uh subscription i want go, go for a walk <laughs> kiss a stranger right on the mouth give them COVID, please nice justin how about you what do you got uh, I am going to recommend, uh, Rob actually got me into, uh, new girl, the sitcom that was on Fox for like seven seasons. It's fucking funny. Uh, I really, really enjoy, uh, how they wrote these characters. Jake Johnson is a fucking uh, that guy. gem of an individual and I am obsessed with his comedic delivery. So like definitely, definitely the kind of comedy I would love to write into a show one day. It's just really, really fucking funny. And uh, to piggyback off what Seth said, I went for like a very, very fucking long walk the other day. Uh, and I listened to three back to back albums and just kind of got lost in the city. It, go do that. Just go outside. I know the weather's starting to turn depending on where you live in the country or the world right now. But if you can get outside and, and just go for a walk, listen to some music and just kind of lose yourself for a while. It does wonders for the soul. I would highly recommend that. Another cool thing uh, I love about New Girl is the classic line from Zoe Deschanel. All right, chill your tits. Best part of that show. That's right. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Um, I also, that is a great show. I, I will jump on that as well. That is a very fun show. And Jake Johnson. Fantastic. I love, he was the best, one of the, one of the many best parts about Into the Spider-Verse. Like that, he's yeah. just phenomenal. Oh my God. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So amazing. Uh, for me, I would say uh, check out Project Winter, uh, a game on Steam. It's great. It's fun. Play along with us. Uh, we have, you know, we're going to be playing that again sometime soon. It was on sale last week for like seven bucks, but I think it may be back up to its regular price at 20. I would say don't buy it at 20 bucks unless you're feeling like it. Uh, but if it does go on sale, definitely check it out. We're going to be playing that on the regular, so you can always come join us. Uh, and check that out. And speaking of checking it out, don't forget to follow MindGap on all your social medias. Uh, Facebook, tw Instagram, uh, Twitter, also uh, at MyGamp Podcast. And also don't forget to check us out on YouTube. Like and subscribe there. We post full episodes of the podcast as well as uh, clips and highlights from both our podcast episodes as well as our video game streams. And also come check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash podcast. Drop us a follow, turn on your notifications, you know, and come hang out with us, man. I, I absolutely love our video game streams. I love interacting with our fans. Come hang out with us while we record the podcast episodes. That's some of the best part is getting the commentary from you all just hanging out and, and being a part of the show. So twitch.tv slash podcast. Give us a follow, turn on those notifications, and uh, come hang out with us. And this Saturday, 8 p.m. Central, we're going to be playing Dungeons & Dragons, the fantasy board game. Again, we're continuing that adventure. It's going to be a real great time. And also, don't forget to follow Justin on the digital webs as well. 
on Instagram and Twitter at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, check us out on Spotify. While it's still free, we actually never got to that topic tonight, mm. but, uh, you know, tune into uh, maybe the next episode. We'll figure it out. Um, Stitcher, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, all the places that you can find and consume the old podcast. Um, sh- subscribe to us, share us uh, around, write a review, like us, all those things. The big one is sharing. Just copy the link, send it out there, and tell everyone, hey, these knuckleheads are worth a listen because it means a lot to us. And we thank you ahead of time, which means that you're now contractually obligated to do it. Uh, also, 2East8th.com slash MindGap. And then just keep an eye on all of 2 east Eighth stuff, uh, the socials, the website. We just did a website redesign, new color scheme and all that jazz. So go check that out and uh, see all the new fun links that we've posted up there. And, of course, the Quarantine Files. This is Episode 6 coming out this Friday, Friday the 13th of November. Uh, it's going to be a scary episode because you're looking at that mug right there. Well, if you're listening, you're not. But the Twitch people just saw him aggressively gesture at them. Um, but no, it'll be a good episode. So please, uh, please come check that out. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Seth, thanks again for being here. This was an absolute delight. You're always welcome. And I, I seriously, come hang out with us. We'll let you know we're doing a Jackbox night. Uh, come hang out with us. If you're feeling frisky and want to join the Discord community, we'll talk nerdy to you all day long. We'll get you, we'll get you through. Join a video game stream. I am 37% more likely to join as well. Justin typically will show up as a, as a cameo appearance from time to time. <laughs> I, I would... Uh absolutely come join a video game stream so that's amazing you just name the day and the time and i am there next jackbox day we're gonna give you we'll let you know come hang out with us we'll have ourselves a a doozy of a twosy of a time so seth thanks so much for being here man this has been great this has been a blast thank you guys and until next time until next time uh it feels like a a slogan i i I have a slogan here until next time and he with a salute (laughs) uh justin thank you Douglas, thank you. Twitch, thank you. And listeners, as always, thank you. And remember, have a dandy fucking day.